Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I'm here today again with the Cosmo Communicator. I've been using it for a little while. I made the unboxing video, got to show it off a little bit, and you guys got a kind of an initial feel for the phone, or communicator really. I mean, it's not really fair to call it a phone because it's not. Although you can put a SIM card in it. It's got eSIM, it's, called, it's got dual SIM support. You can make phone calls from it. It's even got dual microphones to where you can use it either which way. You can talk on it like this or flip it upside down because it's got dual handset speakers. So it does work as a phone, but it's not something that you typically think of when you pick up a smartphone, even though it's running Android 9. So it's been out for a while, but I thought there was some merit to this. Of course, they've got a new device coming out on the horizon, but as a communications tool, it's really interesting and it's novel in the smartphone and the mobile platform space because not only can you use it on the front with a little screen on there as well, it's got a full QWERTY keyboard on it. And typing on it is really interesting because it feels like you're typing on an actual laptop keyboard. It's got nice key press and it's got the keys bounce back real nice. It's really kind of enjoyable to type on. It's unlike anything else I've ever used in the mobile space. And you guys know I'm like the number one BlackBerry fan in the world. I love my physical keyboards. So when I reached out and I talked to these guys, I was really excited about getting my hands on this. So we're going to talk about this some more dive in and talk more about the experience and the functionality of the Cosmo Communicator. But before we get into that, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about the Cosmo Communicator. So when you first pick up the Cosmo Communicator, I, I keep wanting to call the phone. Maybe it, you'll have to forgive me if I slip up. On the front end, it's neat because it's actually got a fingerprint sensor built into this. So you can unlock it. Ta-da! You've got the blue lights that lets you know that you're good to go. So you've got the fingerprint sensor. What I would recommend doing is setting up two fingerprints. So you want your thumb for right here, but then when you open it up, if you need to unlock it while you're done, I would recommend your left index finger so you can reach around and unlock it this way. Just kind of one of those life pro tips, uh, a life hack, if you will, for using this device. 24 megapixel primary camera, 5 megapixel selfie camera. They're not the greatest in the world. I'm not really going to spend a lot of time talking about that. They're not there so you can take a bunch of fancy pictures and upload them to TikTok or Twitter or Instagram, whatever. It's incidental. The purpose of this device is to be a communications tool and a communications platform, and that is what it excels at. Yes, it's got stereo speakers. Yes, it's got a six inch screen. Yes, it's got a 4200 milliamp battery. It's got the Media MediaTek Helio P70 processor, which when this came out was more advanced than it is now, but it pairs nicely with the device. Like you don't really feel like it's slowing down. It doesn't really feel sluggish. It's got six gigs of RAM, which is perfectly capable, especially running Android 9. Now in the security space, it's still running a security patch from January, 2021. That was like six months ago, so I don't think that is really a big priority of theirs when it comes to this device, especially not at this point, because the new one's going to be coming out later on, I think this year, but there'll, there'll be more on that later. So upside down, there is no upside down with this phone. You can talk like this, or you can talk like that. I think that's kind of neat. That was a very well thought out thing, because when you pick it up, it's not always evident which side is up when you pick up the, pick, when you pick up the device. It's got dual USB-C's on here, one on the top, one on the bottom. You've also got bookended stereo speakers, so that's nice as well. It's got a headphone jack, so those of you who are wired audio enthusiasts, you will be super happy you can plug it in and get your audio that way. And then you open it up. you got the big six-inch screen, and then you've got this nice full QWERTY keyboard. I like that they didn't try and compress and condense this down and make it smaller. It really needed to be this large. The biggest reason I say that is when you're using this, the phone feels kind of cramped, and that's because of Android. You know, when you're using like Twitter, when you're using Google Chrome, all that stuff, it's very, very condensed on the screen. Just like if you were to turn your phone sideways, that's effectively what you get here. But you can rotate it and flip it up to where you can use it that way. It's kind of interesting, though, when you flip it up, there is actually an auto-rotate option because of Android. So let me unlock this real quick. Use our handy-dandy fingerprint scanner. So we're inside here. When you scroll it down, there's actually... There's actually a rotate option on here. So there's the auto rotate. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> you can't rotate it that way. What you have to do is use the planet button here down at the bottom 
and then you go to the planet icon and then you do force rotate and then you can use it just as you would any other regular smartphone so you can use it vertically you can do that it's much better this way when you're trying to enjoy certain things because when you go back you just hit the button to flip it back and then let's say we want to go into word it's great because you can type on it it actually works well there are several embedded apps that cosmo communicator has on it because of the planet computer guys and they are much more suited for doing things on here so the email app using microsoft word this shines in the multitasking productivity department if you're typing up a word document on the go if you're typing up an email on the go very very good at that stuff and you do have a little bit of a learning curve with the computer keyboard not be and there is a little bit of a learning curve with the keyboard not so much from the key placement but getting used to typing on it you have to make sure that you you learn the finesse of of the keystrokes in that way that it's picking everything up the way that it's supposed to you need to make sure you press down nice and firmly on the keys sometimes if you press very lightly or loosely on the edges it might not always pick up so that can cause some frustration when you're typing but it's really also very cool because you've got hotkeys just like you would on a normal computer so you can use the control button control c to copy control v to paste you can do the alt tab if you want that even works on here but they've got hotkeys on here as well that you can use with the function key you can use the function key and then the little letters here they've got the volume up volume down brightness up brightness down screenshot for r and it's really neat there's been a lot of thought that has been put into this device and how to make it a multitasking powerhouse for what it is now when you look at different things in the world today we've got the fold we've got the duo there are all these multitasking really cool phones that are out there nowadays this isn't trying to compete with it this is like a tandem phone yes you can use it as a standalone if you want to but it's one of those things where it's like i would carry a regular phone and this is very 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 niche suited for like business or doing work on the go so that way when you're out and you're like hey i need to do it i need to review a word document real quick i need to review a pdf real quick i need to take a look at these spreadsheets i need to send off a whole bunch of emails and i don't want to do it on my phone and you just kind of have all of your stuff set up on here for your business and your work and your productivity related apps so there is a place for this in the world and it's one of those things where it's very much an enthusiast device it's not something that you'll ever really expect to go pick up at best buy you're not going to find it at t-mobile or at&t on the store shelf but if you decide that you want to pick one up and use this as kind of like a secondary device then i think there is some real world application and it's not one of those ones you need to upgrade every year because this is such a narrowly focused device it's something that can afford to have android 9 or android 10 or not necessarily the bleeding edge of technology because it does what it needs to very very well with what it has the skill set that it has is tied in with the keyboard and that's the most important thing here but you can use it for everything else you can watch youtube on here you can use twitter you can use anything that's on the android app space because it's running android 9. so i would like to see it get an update to android 10 at least i mean we're looking at android 12 right around the corner it's already in beta for pixel users and that means once it hits the market then other developers will fall in line behind it but i think what the big thing is here is this one's been out for a little while and the new one's going to be coming out at some point in the future so that's probably where the emphasis is now but overall it's been really interesting typing on it is something that's kind of neat i like the oversized in enter key here so it makes it very easy whenever you're reaching over the hit it everything's centered well you've even got the directional pad here one thing that you can do with this is some emulator stuff like it's really fun if you want to set up like an emulator and, and play it on there because you've got the physical keys and then you've got 128 gigs of storage space it's got expandable sd card slot so it's got everything that you could ask for for a complete workflow and productivity package it's just on a condensed compressed environment and it reminds me so much of the old pocket computers and i had one a long 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 time ago it looked almost just like this and i think it might have been a toshiba that i had um i can't remember exactly what brand maybe it was an hp I got it whenever it was compact that's what it was it was a compact and when I was in Iraq back in 2006 I bought one and I took it out there with me so I could use it for like homework uh, I was doing like distance education school through correspondence while I was sitting out in the Humvee in the middle of Iraq <laughs> um, interesting story I took quite a few classes while I was out there when I had some downtime but I would use it I actually typed up some assignments on it I had a Nintendo emulator on there I was playing like Pac-Man and Mario and stuff whenever I had free time this brings back so many thoughts and feels 
back to that time in my life. But this is something, this is a form factor that largely got left behind. And the guys at Planet Computers have decided that this is a model for success for people who want to pick something up, a very niche device for on-the-go business, productivity, school, workflow, things and things like that. And then also, I think there can be some room for improvement. Uh, I don't like that this is not adjustable. It's it's like a one-size-fits-all and then it's lean back. It's kind of an aggressive angle, uh, recline back like that. It would be nice if you could pop it up like this or maybe like this. So hopefully in the future, it will be able to pivot more. And then you've got these harsh sticking points on the back here because this is kind of like the hinge that opens it up and then keeps it open. They're a little on the sharp side. So you got to be careful with that. I mean, I don't think you're going to slice your finger off, but you can tell that there's a little bit of sharpness to them. So overall, I think that it's a really interesting device. I think it, it can be polished and refined more. I think that they have a formula for success here, and this is kind of like the beta version of it. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next one brings to the table because I think that if they can get this a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more tailored, a little bit more seasoned, throw out the oven a little bit longer, it can be something really, really special. So that's all I've got on my look at the Cosmo Communicator. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.